Hey everybody, Maction here, and welcome back for part two of our review of the Digix Media Tab 1030. In this part of the review, we're going to talk about software. And on an Android device, software means apps. So let's talk about apps and how well the apps perform on this particular tablet. So let's dive right in. Now, one of the things that's very important about these budget tablets is that for the price, you usually have a trade-off. And that trade-off is performance. However, I'm very pleased to say that this Digix tablet doesn't seem to have quite the performance lull that I would have expected. For example, I put it through the normal rounds, Angry Birds, and I also tried a couple of my favorite for judging how well a tablet works, and that is Moon Chaser, as well as My Paper Plane 2. Now, My Paper Plane 2, as you can see, is a 3D game, so it usually takes just a touch more oomph. Now, it so happened that one of the things I discovered while playing My Paper Plane 2 is that the accelerometer seemed a little bit twitchy, a bit more so than most of the tablets I've tried. Now, the game itself played smoothly, but the controls were a little touchy, so I wonder if the accelerometer itself is just a little overly sensitive. Now we'll go ahead and move on to something that was even a bit more intensive. This game's called Oscura. I do know that it is graphics intensive. How do I know this? Several of the budget tablets that I have had in my hands haven't actually been willing to play this game. On the first startup, it did start up quite slow. It took a little bit of time to load, but it is a large game. And then I started playing it. Now fortunately, one of the great things about it was that it played pretty smoothly, with only very limited stuttering in a couple of places. Even that small amount of stuttering was limited enough that it was manageable. A few of the other apps that a lot of people are going to be wanting to use are Facebook, Netflix, and Skype. So, Skype works well. But keep in mind that there's only one camera, the front-facing camera, and it is a 0.3 megapixel camera. So you're not going to get good video off of that, even in good lighting conditions. Netflix, however, works just fine. The streaming is, works well, and it will really only be hampered by your particular internet connection. And then, of course, Facebook. Facebook worked pretty smoothly. Um, I really have no qualms about the performance here. But for those of you who happen to want some concrete numbers, I did get some Antutu benchmarks as well as Quadrant Standard. Now, for those of you who don't know, Quadrant Standard and Antutu benchmarks run your tablet through a battery of tests and then spit out a score based upon those tests. You can take that score and compare it to other tablets and see how yours ranks. Now, the numbers are a little bit difficult to pin down, primarily because when I was running the tests, I started getting some quite varying numbers at the beginning, but after having run it a couple of times, it smoothed into a much narrower distribution. So what I've done is I've taken an average, and for Antutu, the benchmark is somewhere around the neighborhood of 3,800, 3,850 really, right in that area. On the Quadrant benchmark, I wound up getting an average of around 2100. Sometimes it went as low as 2000, sometimes as high as 2200. But that's kind of where you're looking at. Now you can take those numbers and compare them to other devices available. That will give you a good idea of the performance of this tablet in those tests. I was pleasantly surprised by the smoothness of performance that this tablet had. All right, so that's about all that I have for you on performance. Um, it will do a pretty good job for most of the tasks that I think most people are getting a tablet for. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. Stay tuned for part three. We're going to go over battery life, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on the tablet. Most of them good, but there are a couple that might interest you. So stay tuned.